Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Amin, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and are always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Fiona. Welcome to What You Next podcast. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting me. So happy to have you here. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm, I live in London in the United Kingdom. I've got, I'm married and I've got two daughters who are now off at university. Um, and I've been making a living for myself as an author for about the last 16 years. Although you wouldn't know it if you looked at my books on Amazon because for The Last Goodbye, my current book, is my first book under the name of Fiona Lucas. Before that, I was Fiona Harper. Ooh, oh my gosh, I got it for your book. So that's amazing. <laughs> so how did you decide to have a new pen name? Was it something that the contract asked you, or is it just like you want to shift sh- the things around? Uh, partly because I think with the last couple of books I wrote as Fiona Harper, I moved away from kind of rom-coms and lighter romance, although there was always an emotional edge to it. But I'd gone kind of more over into kind of romance meets book club meets women's fiction. Mm. Um, and so when I signed the, my last contract, the publisher suggested a change of pen name to kind of, and I thought, Okay, okay. And it sometimes helps with the with the retailers and things like that as well. So we will well let's give it a go and see what happens. Yes, oh that's exciting. So what came first, the reading or the writing? And then tell us about your romance journey. Uh well, I was always an avid reader. Um my dad was always telling me off for being off in a fantasy world. Uh my husband one of my husband's nicknames for me is Edna, uh, as in Edna Burke which if you say that in a South London accent, you know, you've got your head in a book all the time. So definitely the thing, the, the reading came first. Mm-hmm. And I loved writing and making up stories as a kid, but didn't really do anything with it until I was more in my kind of mid thirties. So, um, and then I got an idea for writing a, a story. And I thought, I had kids that were really small and, writing you don't need to find a babysitter you just need a pen and a pad or a computer things I had at home I thought well I don't need to buy any special equipment let's give this a go and um, I quickly became absolutely hooked on reading <laughs> so um, on writing um yeah and now I just can't stop so I love this and how about your woman's journey did you read Roman's growing up or how did you I, def- I definitely did. Uh, my grandma used to give me um, her old Mills and Boons or ones that people gave her. So that's Harlequin in the US. Yeah. Um, so I definitely read a few of those and read some historical. I always like to story the bit of romance in it. Um, but a- again, I found some romances. Once I had my story idea, I kind of came back to it and started reading more of the Harlequins because um, I thought that might be an avenue to get published at the time because mm. at that time there was no self-publishing or mm. very little. It, it, the Kindle hadn't been launched yet. So I thought, well, this might be a good way to find my way into the publishing industry. Um, so that's where I started off at Harlequin um, and wrote for them for about 10 years and then alongside that I started writing the longer mainstream romances as well um and gradually the series romance subsided and the the mainstream books kind of became the main stay of what I was writing mm. so what's the difference between writing I know category romance is a little shorter and there's more stricter rules um was it a big shift to write from category romance to the more traditionally published the uh, the mainstream books you know did you find like there was a freedom in one way there's constraints in another or were some of that yeah I think I always struggled keeping to the word count of the harlequins Mm -hmm. I I just write to like to write long (laughs) so I was always like right at the top end of the word count which was about 55,000 words and I I really what I like about those stories it's so focused on that relationship but at the same time I quite often wanted to keep putting extra characters in and other little subplots and my editor would tell take the grandma out Fiona or you've got to keep the kids to like minimal page time Um, so I was looking forward when I wrote something longer to be able to have more characters in and to 
do some other things that you can't do with um, category romance. Um, but I don't think my writing style is hugely different. I think I always had a bit of humour, quite a lot of emotion. Um, so I think that stayed the same, but it's more the length of the stories. And now I can play around. So I've done things with a bit of time travel and alternate realities and things like that, that I wouldn't get away with, with a Harlequin. Um, or maybe they would, maybe they would let me these days. I don't know. <laughs> I have a different line so <laughs> so uh, let's chat about the last goodbye what's the elevator pitch for a uh that the main character anna is a widow and she's been grieving for three years and she misses her husband so much that one new year's eve she phones his old telephone number just to hear his voicemail message but must much to her shock somebody answers mm. Yes, and the story unravels from there. So what do you hope readers to get out from it, from the book? I'm hoping they get a real emotional roller coaster ride, mm-hmm. something that ends up, it's definitely got its dark patches, but it, I think it's also quite hopeful and uplifting as well. And it's been out in the UK for a couple of months, and I've been getting emails from people who are saying, I lost my husband last year, and your book really helped me mm-hmm. to to find hope again and I'm just amazed uh, because you know we sit there we make all these things up and you hope it's going to touch people but I I didn't expect that people would some people would resonate with it so strongly that it would actually make an impact on their lives rather than you know just being a nice story they read (laughs) so that's that's quite humbling (laughs) yeah it was like I found it I read it in one setting and it was like one of those things it was like I got lost in the story. I got lost in the emotional journey of it. And I just like kept wanting to know what was going to happen. And same time, just wanting to see Anna's journey just to not become whole, but just kind of like just be a new person after the loss. And then, you know, the new person and all her journey to grow. Yeah, it took it took a while to get that right. It was quite hard because while I've lost people, I haven't lost um, a partner or a spouse. So I did quite a lot of research um, and it took a while to really, well, how, how do you show this? I mean, how do you get on, move on after somebody's died? And so I kind of had to think back about how did that affect me when I, I lost people I love, but also make it believable for readers that it's not just, oh, a flick a switch flips somewhere and suddenly she's all right again to try and make it a slow and believable transition. So that was probably definitely one of the hardest bits of the book to write. Um, so what has been the process of writing during the panorama of the pandemic? Has it been any easier, any harder, um, any challenges, some self-care? <laughs> um, well, it, at first it wasn't well it's not too much of a change because I work from home a lot of the time what I missed at first was I would quite often go out a couple of times a week and write in a cafe get away from the house and um and I couldn't do that anymore and I sometimes find it a bit hard to focus at home because you know there's washing up to be done and you know chores and and then uh, all my family were at home all of a sudden as well so my husband wasn't going up to London to work every day he had to set up his office in my living room and I had both daughters home from university so the house was a lot noisier to start off with so it took me a while to adjust with extra people in the house but eventually I got there one of the things that really helped is some zoom online writing sessions with other writers that um, a London organization does and there's people all over the world join so you sit there with 300 other people people your know, microphones off and just all tapping away at the same time and that was really good to kind of have those scheduled hours where I would jump on and keep writing rather than just let all the days merge into one <laughs> I love this. So do you write every day or do you write like, um, do you have set set amount of times that you write? I would, when I'm working on a book, I will write probably Monday to Friday. I will write work Saturdays as well if I have to, but I try and get other stuff done at the weekends and mm-hmm. leave some time for the family. Uh, but yes, yeah, so if I'm, once I've finished a book, I sometimes take a couple of weeks off or, you know, I do take breaks. I don't necessarily write every day. Um, sometimes you just don't feel like it. But when I'm near a deadline, I have to. 
<laughs> whether I feel like it or not. So uh, those right, those Zoom sessions really kept me kind of honest, <laughs> kept <Yeah>. me going. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. So what are you working next? Um, I'm writing the story. My, my elevator pitch with this beat would be that um, a young woman finds herself um, on a bench by a bus stop in a little town in Scotland. Uh, the only problem is she has no idea how she got there or even what her name is. Um, and it's a story about amnesia, about um, toxic relationships, but also there's a there's a bit of a runaway bride element to it as well, and a hunky Scottishman to help her get home again. <laughs> Well, me and Amnesia, I have to say, <laughs> I am trash with it. <laughs> I know. I don't know where I am from. I'm like, yes, please give me that. <laughs> I know. Despite the fact it's a mainstream kind of women's fiction story, it is full of the tropes. So I'm like, am I going back to my Harlequin days? I've got runaway brides. I've got amnesia. I've got, you know, all these things. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love this. Um, so as for the book that you have read over the past year that you can't stop thinking about, can't stop watching about, that you recommend our listeners to pick up? I have recently found my way to Kate Claiborne and I love her books. Um, so the last one I read was Love Lettering. And I don't know, she's just got such innovative, interesting ideas and the characters seem so real and the romance is just so... Oh, swoon worthy so yeah I would definitely recommend anything by Kate Claiborne but uh, love lettering I particularly enjoyed last year I love Kate Claiborne and yes love lettering was great <laughs> awesome um tell us where you can find you online uh I am well I've got a website which is fiona-lucas.com so you can find all my links there but uh the best place to find me is on book talk which is the book reading corner of tiktok <laughs> um so yeah I got into tiktok uh around when in the in lockdown last year and um so I'm doing talking about books doing writing tips and things like that um and just generally being a, a nerdy sort of writer person <laughs> I love that. I gotta follow you. So, <laughs> awesome. So thank you, Fiona, for being on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been really good fun to chat to you. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For book recommendations, author interview archives, and other fun book resources and tips, please visit watchreadnextblog.com. The Watch Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Network. To discover new shows to listen and love, please visit frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.